Hi, this is Dr. Donald Pelto. I want to talk to you about um, a little bit about toenail injuries and treatments. I had a question this week from one of my patients. Actually, he was an emergency room doctor that was in residency and had a question on how to deal with uh, toenail injuries, how to treat them. So we're going to go through different types of uh, toenail injuries. Here you can see an ingrown toenail. Here you can see a toenail that fell off. Here's one that obviously had some trauma or some injury to it. Uh, all these here on the bottom. So let's kind of go and look at some of the common questions you should ask when you have a toenail injury and how to treat that. Now this isn't supposed to substitute medical care. This is only to give some information for you and, and also for any emergency room doctors that are watching this. So first of all, let's look at the parts of the toenail. Uh, the, really the most important thing that we need to deal with right now is actually something called the, the nail matrix. The nail matrix is this little blue thing right here that's actually underneath the nail. The nail matrix has a germinal matrix and it has a sterile matrix. Uh, the germinal matrix is where about 80 to 90 percent of the growth happens. So that's actually right back here uh, before the nail begins. Okay, so right around this area is where the nail matrix is. Uh, the nail also includes the nail plate that's on top of it, the cuticle uh, back here, and um, also the bone underneath. All these things are very important if someone has nail trauma. So the first question I have is when I have a nail injury, will the nail grow back after the injury? Most of the time the nail does grow back. Uh, sometimes it doesn't grow back normal though. You can see here it may grow back thickened, a little bit thickened like this from the injury. It may grow back in part as well. So right here you can see that this portion of the nail uh, isn't growing back. Uh, that could either be from injury or it could be from an actual procedure where phenol was placed on the edge of the nail. Uh, here, this could be from an ingrown toenail where a portion is removed or needs to be removed. And here you can actually see a nail with a line on it. And, and that uh, is something that can happen uh, from trauma or also uh, can sometimes where the nail just stops growing and then grows again. So all these things can happen. It may grow back, uh, but it's for sure that if you injure this area down here with the matrix and it injures it bad enough, it probably won't grow back. What causes thickening of the toenail after injury? Well, after injury, there's a couple of things that can happen. It can either get thickened, uh, black and blue, or loosened. Usually what happens is when you injure a toenail and uh, from something dropping on it, 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 it injures it so much that it's more susceptible to getting a, a fungal infection. Because fungus is all around us, and that fungus can get underneath the, the nail plate, and it can cause thickening. It also can have some lifting, you can see here. This may either just be normal lifting, or it could actually be uh, nail fungus in there as well. And here you can see these, uh, this buildup of the keratin underneath the toenail. What causes nail lifting? Nail lifting uh, usually happens because you injure the nail somehow and it starts to lift off or the toenail is a little bit long and you actually hit it in your shoe and it kind of lifts it, lifts it off. And so a portion of it's lifted and a portion of it is attached. You can see that little white portion. And if that happens, we can just trim, trim out that area like this and sometimes we can apply something called phenol on the area and that can actually help it to reattach because you want to have it reattached to the sterile matrix as it's growing out but if it, there's too much trauma it won't reattach and that's one of the biggest challenges is how you can deal with nail attaching what do you do if there's a blood blister if there's a blood blister you can take a pin uh, heat it up and put it in there if uh, over 50 percent is involved I like to take off the whole nail what if the nail bed is damaged the nail bed is the area right underneath the nail plate if the nail bed is damaged and you know it, uh, you have to examine it because you may need to suture up or, or take a stitch and put a stitch in there. If if there if there's a cut in the in the in the nail, I tend to remove the the nail, stitch it up, and then if there is a broken bone, we have to fix the bone. This is using a K wire in the area. Uh, if there if less than 50% is involved, I, I tend to just maybe make a hole in there and drain out some of the blood. But if over 50%, I just remove the whole toenail. So you have to see is the nail attached and is there any broken bone. And, and the best way of determining that is if there, there's an x-ray. So uh, if something hits the toe, you're concerned about a break here of this distal phalanx, you should probably get an x-ray. If the nail matrix is damaged, uh, what happens if the toenail may not go back? I want to give an example of a phenol procedure. This is an actual procedure where you put uh, phenol, it's a, it's a medicine, 89% carbolic acid, and um, you put it in the, in the nail matrix, and then as it grows out, uh, it actually won't grow out. It's supposed to kill it. Now, it does cause a chemical burn, and there's a lot of redness down here that people can sometimes uh, mistake as, a, as an infection. Okay? So people can mistake that as an infection, all that redness there. 
Uh, when should a nail be removed? Like I said, if it's involving 50% or more of the nail, uh, if it keeps uh, chronic ingrown toenail, you can remove it permanently like this. Uh, but just removing the nail, usually about 50% of the times, I always say it grows back normal. Um, if you found this helpful and you liked about like this information, you can learn more at drpelta.com. And uh, there's two resources on there. One's the foot pain toolkit, has information on different types of foot pain. And there's also something if you have diabetes called the Diabetes Toolkit.